Mr. R's math stories, Mr. R's math stories, Mr. R's math stories, let's do some math. Hey everyone, I'm Mr. R, and welcome to my multiplication story, A Giant Rabbit in My Classroom. It's a story you're probably not going to believe, but it's true, I promise you. At least, I remember it happening. And for the fun of it, and because it's a math story, and you're all so good at math, I put in a few multiplication challenges. So grab a pencil and paper so you can help me figure out the correct answers. Here we go. Math stories. Chapter one. It was a long time ago when I was teaching in a school that was a bit strange and a bit peculiar, but not nearly as strange and peculiar as the school you're in right now. As I remember, it was a cold, dark morning when I opened the door of my classroom and saw something I just couldn't believe. At first, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, but then I realized they weren't. What was it that was so strange, you might ask? First of all, Fluffy, our pet rabbit, was not in his hutch anymore. But that wasn't really strange, because Fluffy often escaped his hutch overnight. What was very strange was that Fluffy the rabbit was as tall as me. His whiskers were the length of yardsticks, and his ears were as tall as small trees, and they were brushing against the ceiling of the classroom. Now here's the first math question. If Fluffy's whiskers were 36 inches each, that's a yard, how many inches would four of his whiskers be if they were lined up in one straight row? Now might be a good time to pause the video to give yourself a chance to work. This first problem says that Fluffy's whiskers are 36 inches each and that we lined up four of them in a row. So they'd be like this, 36, 36, 36, and 36. How long would that line of whiskers be? Well, we have to figure that out. Well, we could use addition, 36 plus 36 plus 36 plus 36. Add that all up and get the answer, but that's a pretty slow way of doing this. A better method would be by using multiplication, and we can say four times 36, because we have four 36s, and this means four groups of 36. Now there's lots of ways we can go about solving this, but since it's the first problem in the story, I'm gonna use the traditional multiplication algorithm, because I think that's the fastest and easiest of all of the ways. And to do that, we'll put the 36 on top and the four on the bottom. We'll write it like that. And that means four groups of 36. And we start by doing the ones place times the ones place. So four times six, if we know our multiplication facts, which I hope you're learning, is 24. We put the four ones here in the ones column, and then we regroup the 20, the two tens, over in the tens column, just like we do when we're using the addition algorithm. And then we take that four and we multiply it by the number in the tens place. The digit is three, so four times three is 12, which in this case really means 120 since it's in the tens place, so it's 12 tens. But then we have to add those two more tens, just like we would in the addition algorithm. So 12 tens plus two more tens is 14 tens. The ones place is already there and we get 144. So if you wrote 144 inches, you'd be absolutely correct. That was fun, wasn't it? What's a story without some math in it, I always say. Anyway, it's time for chapter two. Fluffy, I yelled. What happened to you? You're a giant. He just looked at me and said, Carrots eat, carrots eat, carrots, carrots, carrots eat. Carrots? What do carrots have to do with turning into a giant? You always eat carrots, I said. 
not even thinking about the fact that Fluffy also had learned how to speak. It took too, too many carrots, said Fluffy, and he looked towards the small refrigerator we had in the class that held his carrots. It was opened, and I saw all of the bags of carrots lying on the floor, empty. You ate all the carrots, I yelled. Fluffy nodded his head. If there were 48 empty bags of carrots on the floor, and each bag had eight carrots in it, how many carrots had Fluffy the rabbit eaten in total? And now might be a good time to pause the video to give yourself some time to work. So this problem says there were 48 bags of carrots with eight carrots each. Now this is also a multiplication problem, 48 bags with eight carrots each. 48 groups of eight, that's a lot of carrots. Now in the first problem, we used a traditional algorithm to solve the multiplication problem. And so this one, we're gonna take a slightly different approach. It's very similar though. I'm gonna put the 48 on top. Now I'm going to put the 8 on the bottom here. And then we can see we have 8 times 48, or 8 groups of 48. But this time we're going to use a method that we call partial products. And in this method, we really look at the place value of what's happening in our multiplication. So we start by doing the ones place times the ones place, which is 8 times 8. 8 times 8. And if you've been practicing your multiplication facts, you know that 8 times 8 is 64. And then we're going to do the ones place times the tens place. And in this case, there's a four in the tens place and four tens is 40. So we'll do eight times 40. Now, what is eight times 40? I know what eight times four is, it's 32. So we'll just take the zero, and put it on that side. And I'll know that eight times 40 is 320. Now we'll write those under here, being very careful to get them in the right place value. So we have the eight times eight was 64 and the eight times 40 was 320. So that three goes in the hundreds place. And then we're gonna add it up. Four plus zero is four, six and two is eight, and that's an 80, and then 384. So if you wrote 384 carats, you'd be absolutely correct. That one was fun too. I think we all should do a little multiplication every day, don't you? Anyway, it's time for chapter three. What are we gonna do, Fluffy? The students can't see you like this. They'll be scared of you. Fluffy just looked at me and said, me hungry, more carrots. Fluffy, I don't have any more carrots. And even if I did, I wouldn't give them to you. You're giant already. I don't need you to grow any bigger. Then I suddenly saw Fluffy change and he sounded a bit, how shall one say, scary. Me hungry, eat teacher, said Fluffy. You're not gonna eat me, Fluffy, I insisted. Me hungry, eat teacher, repeated Fluffy, and he started hopping towards me. Fluffy, stop! At this point, you might be able to guess why I regretted having worn my orange shirt that day. Anyway, I yelled stop 49 times every minute for the next nine minutes. How many times had I yelled stop in total? Now might be a good time to pause that video to give yourself a chance to work. So in this problem, I screamed stop 49 times a minute for nine minutes. So I know that's gonna be 49 times nine. 49 times nine. Now we use partial products in the last problem. I'm gonna use partial products again, but I'm gonna take a slightly different approach. So instead of writing the place value to the right, this time I'm gonna draw a rectangle to make an array. 
Now for the array, I'm going to break up the top number 49 into its place value. So I have nine ones and I have 40 in the tens place to four. And then I'm going to multiply that by the nine. Now we'll do each multiplication separately. Nine times nine is 81. Hopefully you've been memorizing your multiplication facts. You'll know that. And then that was the nine times nine. Now we're going to do the nine times the tens place, which is nine times 40. Now again, I know nine times four is 36. So all you have to do is add the zero back on the end and you'll get 360. You can write them underneath. Nine times nine was 81. And be very careful to line up your columns, 360 underneath. And you'll add up those two numbers and you'll get one. 14 tens, which is 140, then 300 plus 100 is 400. So if you said 441 screams, I was screaming stop, you'd be absolutely correct. I hope you enjoyed that multiplication problem. Now it's time for chapter four. Yes, I screamed stop lots of times, but Fluffy didn't stop hopping right towards me. So I began running. I ran right out of the classroom, right out of the school, and began running down the street. But no matter how fast I ran, Fluffy was right behind me. I discovered giant rabbits are quick. Me hungry, eat teacher, he kept repeating. I didn't know what I was going to do. I mean, I'd never been chased by a giant rabbit before. But suddenly, I had an idea. I'll run to the supermarket and hopefully find some carrots for him to eat. It was better than him trying to chew on me. I saw the supermarket down the street and ran straight in. Fluffy was still following me. I ran to the produce section and saw a tall pile of bags of carrots. I grabbed one and threw it at Fluffy. He caught it in his mouth and swallowed the entire bag, including the bag. I saw him grow even more. His ears were squeezing against the ceiling of the supermarket. I threw another bag at him and he ate that one too. This time I saw his tail grow. It used to be small and stubby, but was now as big as a car. What was I gonna do? I didn't need an even bigger hungry rabbit chasing me for lunch. Then I had an idea. I saw a whole bunch of bags that said baby carrots on them. I grabbed one of the bags and flung it straight at Fluffy. Fluffy caught the bag in his mouth and swallowed. And just like I thought might happen, he shrank a little. I started throwing the bags of baby carrots as fast as I could and he was eating them as fast as trick-or-treaters eating Halloween candy. As a matter of fact, I threw nine bags of baby carrots at him in 20 seconds. Now, if each bag of baby carrots had 93 carrots in it, how many carrots would have been in nine bags of carrots? That's a lot of nines. Once again, each bag had 93 carrots in it. How many carrots would have been in nine bags? Now might be a good time to pause the video to give yourself some time to work. So this problem says I threw nine bags of baby carrots at Fluffy and there were 93 baby carrots in each bag. That's a lot of carrots. So now we have a multiplication, nine groups of 93. And let's use the traditional algorithm again for this one since I think the traditional algorithm is probably the easiest and quickest method to solve these problems. There's nothing wrong with the other ones, of course, but this is probably the quickest. So I set it up nine times 93, and I'll do the ones place times the ones place, nine times three, and that gives us 27. I'll put the seven ones there. We'll regroup those two tens into the tens place, and then we'll do nine times the digit in the tens place, which is nine or 90, and that's 81. And then we have to add those two more tens. So we have 83 tens or 830. 
And so we have the answer 837 carats. And if that's what you wrote, you would be absolutely correct. Well, we finally made it to the final chapter, chapter five. I hope you all did a great job with the math. A little secret, this chapter has no math problem. Ah, chapter five. As fast as Fluffy swallowed the baby carrots is as fast as Fluffy shrank. And a few minutes later, Fluffy was the cute little rabbit that my students and I knew and loved. I walked over and picked him up and cradled him in my arms. Please never try to eat the teacher again, I said as I began to walk back to school. Fluffy just looked at me and winked one of his big rabbit eyes. When my students arrived at school that morning, Fluffy was back in his hutch and I didn't tell them anything. Maybe I should have, but I figured it was best to let everything be a secret between me and Fluffy. The end. Don't forget to subscribe for more of my math stories, math songs, and other educational videos. Also, you can check out mathstory.com for tons of my free math resources. Anyway, I'm Mr. R, reminding you to have a great math adventure. See you next time.